All right, so the question we just saw, the exercise where we identified observational units and variables, that's definitely something you could see on a test. But a question I always put on a test, because it's going to matter a lot as we move forward in this class, are identifying the different types of variables, uh, whether it's categorical or quantitative. So categorical variables are ones that divide people into categories. They're usually uh, um, not numeric, so they will have things like words in them or yes and no. Uh, quantitative variables are numeric, and they need to measure something. That's the important thing. Having just numbers alone is not a measurement. Um, if you think about your student ID, right, my ID to log into people's, uh, my SDCCD or to Canvas, that's all numbers, but those numbers are not a measurement of anything. And if I add one to them, that just makes me a new user, uh, not a, you know, an inch taller or something like that. So just because there are numbers does not mean we're in quantitative, uh, we're not, just because there are numbers does not mean we're guaranteed to be quantitative, which is why I like the term quantitative more than numeric. Um, and I tend to use categorical over uh, qualitative. So I'm going to bring us back to this previous thing. And we can see here we've got a lot of different variables. We've got some that are obviously quantitative, GPA, age, CT sessions attended. All of those are actual measurements, right? And then we've got some categoricals, gender, how people prefer to study, whether it's in small groups, big groups, or alone, and whether or not they attended a CT session or a part of a club are all categorical. Now we do divide these up a little bit more. Um, within quantitative, you can see it down here, there is discrete and continuous. So looking back at my example, oh, look, I had it right here. It's cute. It's better to look at it on the actual thing. Uh, discrete is things that have whole numbers or fixed numbers. So think of discrete as if you had a number line, only being able to hit certain values. So a really good example of discrete would be shoe size, right? You could be a six, a six and a half, a seven, a seven and a half, but there's no such thing as a six and three quarters. Uh, that would be discrete versus continuous might be foot length in centimeters. Now your foot can be anywhere from here to here. I don't know, whatever the longest foot and the shortest foot ever are. And you could be anywhere on that particular scale. So that's the difference between discrete and continuous. And you can see here for our quantitative, we have some discrete, we have a continuous, we have another discrete. Now I do want to talk a little bit more about age. Age technically uh, could be considered a continuous variable depending on how it's collected. So here they obviously collected it as a whole number. That's how most humans who are adults report out their age. Um, but when I worked at UCSD, one of the first things I did was take their discrete age, because it was all um, men in their 50s. So it was mostly like a bunch of 56s and 55s. Um, and instead did it based on when they came in and were tested and their birthday. So I was able to get a decimal version of how old they were. So we, we, we kind of converted that to a continuous variable because th that made our data a little bit cleaner for us. Um, for categorical, you do have three types again, um, or for this one, nominal means there's no ordering scheme. So political party, there's no ordering for the political parties. So it's just Democrat, Republican, independent, green, whatever the heck you might have there. Uh, ordinal does have an ordering system. So something like your high school class, right? Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. There is a meaning to those, and they do go in a certain order, so that would be ordinal. And then binary is our yes-no variables, much like we would have seen here in this question. We had our study preferences would have been a cat. Oops, I guess I can go back and write them in. I just feel bad that I'm scrolling so much. Um, our study preferences is nominal, right? There's three different options. Oh, actually, I think we can make that ordinal. I didn't even think about this. Not because, right, there's an ordering, like alone, then small groups, then big groups, right? We could we could even put an ordering system to this for sure. Um, whereas everything else we have is by an, oops, binary, binary. Um, gender, we can't see. This is um, data from a group project. If they were really inclusive, they might have had an alternative to male and female, right? 
um, non-binary or something else. So if that were true, uh, we don't know because we can't see all their data here. I, I truncated it. Let's just say if there was more than two options for gender, there wouldn't be an ordering system, so we'd call that nominal. So we've got a little demonstration of each of these in our example data set.